Namaskar and welcome. You're watching Midday Prime. Uh, I'm Sakhal Bhatt and as nation battles COVID-19 pandemic, government and its various agencies continue to work on war footing to grapple with the second wave of pandemic. As nation's national broadcaster DD News and DD India, we stand firmly with the frontline workforce and all those who continue to battle it out and those who have lost their loved ones. These are testing times and your channel DD India as well as DD News is with you and we stress more and more on following COVID protocols including masking up even if you're in indoors and on midday prime we put in focus India's massive COVID fight back the progress on vaccination coverage quick roundup of state specific strategies to contain pandemic and related news we also take a look at world news but first up on midday prime here are the headlines COVID aid uh, from neighbours to the major powers in the world continue to pour in from different parts of the countries to counter India's COVID-19 second wave. Two US Air Force C-5M Super Galaxy and C-17 Globe Master 3 arrive carrying oxygen cylinders and other supplies. Germany also dispatches supplies while Norway pledges aid worth 2.4 million American dollars. Vaccination campaign continues to gain mammoth traction nationwide. Government provides more than 16.33 crore vaccine doses to states and union territories. Fee of cost, cumulative inoculation cross 15.22 crore. Total registrations on COVID for phase 3 vaccination reach more than 2.45 crore. And in the last 24 hours, over 19 lakh tests done, nearly 3 lakh recoveries reported as well. In other big news, government starts importing the vital drug Remdesivir from other countries to ease out the shortage of Remdesivir in the country. The first consignment of 75,000 vials to reach India today. Government ramps up the production capacity of Remdesivir in the country. Production capacity of seven licensed domestic manufacturers increased from 38 lakh vials per month to 1.03 crore vials per month. Augmenting oxygen supply continues on war footing as well. Oxygen Express operations expand to Haryana, Telangana down south after Maharashtra, UP, MP as well as Delhi. Indian Air Force flies in oxygen containers from Bangkok, Singapore and Dubai. Union Home Ministry issues orders for states to consider containment measures. Maharashtra government decides to extend lockdown restrictions till 15th of May. Lockdown in Goa till Monday morning. Jammu and Kashmir administration announces 84-hour long lockdown across 11 districts of two union territories. Eight. Eighth phase of polling in West Bengal concluded yesterday over 75% voter turnout recorded, counting for all five state assemblies. On 2nd of May, exit poll predict win for BJP in Assam. Split verdict amidst pollsters for West Bengal say DMK will win Tamil Nadu. BJP leading in Puducherry and LDF government predicted in Kerala as per pollsters. In international news, situation escalating in Thai Myanmar border, leaving more people on both sides of the border along the Salween River displaced. Fighting intensifies between Myanmar army and ethnic Karen insurgents. Thai authorities confirm 200 villagers crossing Thailand this week. Meanwhile, Thailand reinforces its military and restricts access to border. Over in Israel, dozens of people killed in a stampede during a religious gathering for Bonfire Festival incident occurred when tens of thousands of Jews gathered at the tomb for annual commemoration. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls the event heavy disaster. And let's begin Midday Prime with the big news that we are tracking for you at this hour. So aid uh, continues to pour in from world to counter India's COVID-19 lethal second wave. More than 30 countries have come forward to help India and they range from neighbours 
uh, the neighboring countries to the major powers in the world, which includes US, Russia, France, United Kingdom and others. They have pledged to support rushing critical emergency supplies. Countries are sending hundreds of oxygen concentrators, respirators and large quantities of liquid oxygen to help ease the difficult situation facing India. The gesture has been deeply appreciated by India with a lot of gratitude. Here is the latest. Reflecting the United States' solidarity with India as it battles a new wave of COVID-19 cases, the United States is delivering supplies worth more than $100 million in the coming days to provide urgent relief to our partners in India. In addition, U.S. state governments, private companies, non-governmental organizations, and thousands of Americans from across the country have mobilized to deliver vital oxygen, related equipment, and essential supplies for Indian hospitals to support front frontline healthcare workers and the people of India most affected during this current outbreak. Just as India sent assistance to the United States when our hospitals were strained early in the pandemic, the United States is determined to help India in its time of need. Okay, let's uh, talk a bit more about it. Uh, as foreign aid continues to flow in, my colleague uh, Abhishek is uh, with us to put this in perspective. Abhishek Jha joining us live on Midday Prime. Abhishek, very quickly, just give us a sense, uh, the big picture, uh, besides your immediate neighbors, super world powers are also doing their bit, uh, pitching in. Uh, and this is going to go in a long way in terms of augmenting already existing robust medical infrastructure in place to uh, counter the second wave. More on that, please. Okay. Uh, so, the second, as the India has sought help in this hour of crisis because the, uh, all the healthcare infrastructure uh, is, is uh, you know, feeling overburdened to cope up with the rising number of patients which have uh, seen a sudden spike in the last uh, three, four weeks, at least, uh, where the number of infected are, uh, you know, almost like three and a half lakh per day. Uh, so uh, to, to cope up with that overburdened uh, healthcare, uh, healthcare system, India has sought help from uh, so many countries from the world. And uh, beyond that also, the goodwill that India has created across the globe that has uh, come handy in this hour of crisis where so many global uh, powers uh, you know uh, and other countries also in fact uh, uh, more uh, often we talk about us uk uh, and you know france and russia type uh, countries like uh, of this size and this uh, uh, capacity but uh, then the countries like guyana romania uh, maldive and bhutan in fact they have also been uh, standing in solidarity with india and they are also trying to support india with whatever capacity and resources they have and whatever india uh, can you know benefit in the in, in terms of their resources like bhutan has tried to supply uh, about 40 million tons of oxygen uh, from across the border to assam uh, maldives is also trying to uh, you know shore up its capacity to send some uh, oxygen meter and uh, other other uh, life saving drugs and uh, uh, things and uh, today also we have seen some consignment of uh, uh, you know, life-saving equipments, uh, medicine, uh, therapeutic drugs, uh, everything pouring in from uh, USA, Russia, uh, UK. Uh, and we can hope that in the days to come, as more uh, uh, world powers and world fraternity joins hands together in this hour of crisis, where uh, India is one of the, you know, worst affected at this point of time around the globe. Uh, we can be able to uh, overcome this uh, On uh, diplomatic lines, sooner uh, than we later, know... Uh, as the world uh, yes. starts helping us. Yes. Uh, also, uh, the way Operation Metri put India on the high, high ground, the way we reached out to the rest of the world in terms of uh, providing vaccine, and this could this also be seen as a reciprocation from the rest of the world uh, doing their bit pitching in to help India in terms of easing out the situation. As of now, there are already almost 40 countries that are doing uh, whatever they can do in terms of uh, you know sending essential supplies including uh, the critical oxygen, uh, uh, you know, uh, cylinders, etc. Of course, uh, Shakal, uh, like, see, like in a society, like every uh, person has a personality and we identify that person with the kind of attributes and his experience or his behavior in the past. Uh, so is uh, more or less uh, with this world also where India as a uh, personality, if we say, has been very benevolent and the goodwill that India has created in the last eight, ten months, at least in terms of, uh, if we talk just about the COVID pandemic, uh, that has come very, uh, uh, you know, that goodwill has started uh, paying back uh, because India was the one country, in fact, only country uh, which tried to extend its help to almost 150 countries around the globe. Uh, you talk about in terms of supplying vaccine, 
uh, health care, uh, drugs, the paracetamol, hydroxychloroquine, PP kit, face mask, anything and everything that was needed to, uh, you know, work for the frontline workers in order to save lives uh, dealing with COVID patients, everything. Uh, India tried to help uh, around the globe. India did, uh, you know, uh, scaled up its production capacity so that not only it could uh, save and supply everything that was needed domestically, also uh, try to shore up its capacity so that the world at need uh, could be uh, catered. So everything uh, of the last eight, 10 months have uh, started reciprocating when uh, world saw India dealing with this crisis alone. It has come uh, helping uh, and we are seeing help pouring in from every corner of the world. Uh, in fact, uh, countries like China, countries like Pakistan, uh, which, which uh, did not have a very, you know, good rapport with India for a for variety of reasons in the past. Mm. Uh, they have also sought to, uh, you know, try to help some, uh, something. At least uh, in this hour of crisis, every uh, single voice of goodwill counts and uh, we have seen societies and people and individuals across the globe trying to... Yes, uh, the second wave has certainly overwhelmed make, the uh, system, the, uh, the but then... Or, uh, those Abhishek, are, you uh, would you know, agree people, the combined are, effort actually, of state uh, center. Something. Uh, so the messages are reaching to every person around the globe that India is needing help at this time. Uh, yes. And we have seen USAID and other uh, NGOs right. and organizations also trying to uh, ramp up their capacity and their resources in order to send every uh, possible means uh, which can be uh, used in fight against COVID pandemic in India right now. Yes, so basically I was just trying to make that quick point there, Abhishek, uh, that uh, the second wave uh, might have overwhelmed the already existing medical infrastructure uh, and, and, and the government uh, combined effort of government and the state governments and now the neighborhood countries and the world powers also pitching in will definitely add in a long way in terms of mitigating the impact of, of pandemic course. and easing out the situation. Thank you very much, Abhishek, uh, for joining us on Midday Prime. Thanks. Well, in other news, uh, former Attorney General of India, Soli Surabji, has passed away today. He, was, he tested positive for COVID-19 and was undergoing treatment. He served as the Attorney General for India twice between 1989-90 and 1998-2004. to 2004. A renowned human rights lawyer, Soli Surabji, also received Padma Vibhushan for his efforts towards defending freedom of expression. President Ramnath Kovind has tweeted to express grief over the demise of Soli Sarabji. In a tweet, the president said, and I quote, in the passing of Soli Sarabji, we lost an icon of India's legal system. He was among the select few who deeply influenced evolution of constitutional law and justice system. Awarded with Padma Vibhushan, he was among most eminent jurists. My condolences to his family and associates. Also, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has condoled the demise of the former Attorney General of India. Prime Minister tweeted, and I quote, Sri Sholi Sharabji was an outstanding lawyer and intellectual. Through law, he was at the forefront of helping the poor and downtrodden. He will be remembered for his noteworthy tenure as India's Attorney General. Uh, saddened by his demise, condolences to his family and admirers, unquote. Let me quickly go across to uh, my uh, colleague uh, Vikas Sarthi, our legal correspondent, to tell us more about the life and times of Soli Sarabji. Uh, legendary legal luminary uh, who leaves a lot of legacy behind him. Uh, and this is the kind of void, uh, uh, Vikas, you've covered uh, legal uh, for a very, very long period of time. This is the kind of void that uh, is very difficult to be fulfilled. In fact, if you uh, talk about any important cases in the last six decades, you name it and uh, you will find that uh, that Soli Sorabji, Mr. Soli Sorabji played an important role in that case, right from the uh, from the Keshwan and the Bharti case uh, till Menaka Gandhi uh, case, which decided uh, some issues related to personal liberty. Uh, in fact, he was also part of the uh, of, a, of a very famous case, Asa Bombay judgment, uh, which was related to the president rule in, in, in a state. So, he played a very important role, not only as a lawyer, but as a legal luminary and an expert of constitutional uh, subjects. In fact, he was part of the evolution of our constitution, you can say. So it's a big, uh, uh, it, it, it's a big loss for the legal fraternity. Uh, though in last few years, he was not attending courts on a regular basis, but still, he kept his eye on all the ongoing issues related to the top court and uh, other um, important high courts. He expressed his views on those judgments 
uh, uh, which were passed by Supreme Court in last few, uh, last few years, though he was not part of the day-to-day uh, -day proceedings, regular proceedings, but he still uh, kept his eye on the ongoing issues. So certainly, definitely, it's a uh, loss, for, uh, loss for legal community. In fact, Chief Justice of India has also expressed, uh, expressed his uh, uh, condolence on the passing uh, passing away of Mr. Soli Sorajji. In fact, he said that he personally gained so much from his books, his essays, yes. his lectures, and the uh, and the judgments uh, of which justice of which uh, Mr. Soli Sorajji was uh, was part. Uh, he has been uh, at, uh, Attorney General of India for uh, for uh, two times, and uh, it's a big loss for, for the legal fraternity. He was very few. He was among very few lawyers who didn't who who not only saw the evolution of the constitution but they were also an active part of this evolution all right thank you very much uh, vikas uh, for those inputs let's move on and uh, more news coming on the COVID front in order to further boost of utilizing the fast fast uh, fastest feasible mode to bring oxygen supplies to states oxygen express operations continue to bring relief to states the railways has now expanded operations to haryana telangana maharashtra up mp and delhi Cumulative liquid medical oxygen carried by Indian Railways uh, will reach almost 640 metric tons approximately by today. Oxygen Express is expected to reach uh, Sagar and Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh today from Bukaro in Jharkhand. Earlier, an Oxygen Express reached Lucknow from Bukaro as well. Meanwhile, government has started also importing the vital drug Remdesivir from other countries to ease out the shortage of Remdesivir in the country. The first consignment of 75,000 vials is expected to reach India today. And Indian Air Force continues its efforts to help country fight the outbreak of pandemic. Indian Air Force C-17s uh, airlifted three cryogenic oxygen containers from Singapore to Panagad in West Bengal and six from Dubai to Panagad yesterday. In addition, a C-70 also airlifted three containers from Bangkok to Panagar Air Base. Indian Air Force C-17s also airlifted two cryogenic oxygen containers from Chandigarh to Bhuvaneshwar, from, from, uh, four from Hindon Air Base to Ranchi, four from Mumbai to Bhuvaneshwar, two from Chandigarh to Ranchi, one from Indore to Jamnagar yesterday. And besides this, efforts are also underway to airlift two containers from Bhopal to Ranchi, two from Lucknow to Ranchi, two containers from Jodhpur to Jamnagar. In addition, IAF C-130 airlifted Navy medical team personnel from Mumbai to Ahmedabad yesterday who were deployed for a lifting of 75 oxygen cylinders from Baroda to Hindon. But as per the Indian Council of Medical Research, a total of 19,20,000 people, 107 samples of COVID-19 were tested in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative data of testing to reach 28 crore 63,92,086. And as part of the Armed Forces contribution to civil administration in combating current COVID uh, crisis, 57-member naval medical team consisting of two doctors, seven nurses, 26 paramedics and 20 supporting staff has been deputed to Ahmedabad on April 29th. The team will be deployed at the PM Care COVID Hospital, a special hospital set up to manage the COVID crisis. The initial deployment of uh, two teams is for two months period, which would be extended if required. And it's time to slip into a very short commercial break on Midday Prime. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on Midday Prime. Now let's move on to our National Prime segment. And first of all, let's take a look at COVID-19 updates from across the country. Well, as far as the Union Health Ministry, 3,86,452 new cases have been registered yesterday. 
297,540 recoveries were recorded in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative total of recovered patients to 1 crore 53,84,418. And with this, the recovery rate currently stands at 81.99%. India's total active caseload stands at over 31.70 lakh today. The country's present active caseload consists of 16.90% of the total positive cases. The fatality rate stands at 1.11%. And uh, we know that vaccination is the crucial pillar of the five-point strategy of the government uh, to fight the pandemic, which includes testing, tracking, treating, and COVID-appropriate behavior. Government has been leading the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Several proactive steps have been taken. The union government... Uh, uh, for like containment and management of the COVID-19 pandemic, what are these steps? Government of India has so far provided nearly 16.33 crore vaccine doses to states and union territories free of cost. Of this, the total consumption, including the wastage, uh, is uh, across 15 crore mark doses. More than 1 crore COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories which need to be administered. Nearly 20 lakh vaccine doses will be received in addition by the states and union territories within the next three days on the vaccination front. And uh, more than 2.45 crore beneficiaries have been registered themselves on the COVID digital platform for phase three of the vaccination while more than 1.37 crore have registered themselves on April 28th. That was just uh, two days back and more than 1.04 crore registered by the end of 29th of April, that is end of yet, uh, that is yesterday. On the other hand, the cumulative number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country has crossed 15.22 crore today. Now let's shift focus to the states. Maharashtra government has uh, decided to extend the lockdown restrictions till 15th of May amid massive surge in COVID-19 cases. Section Forty-four of the CRPC remains in force across Maharashtra with only emergency services personnel allowed to use local trains, services in Mumbai as well as other public transport in the rest of the state. The government has mandated that vegetable shops, grocery stores, milk outlets can remain open only between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. Meanwhile, 66,159 new cases were registered in Maharashtra yesterday. 68,537 patients were discharged, while 771 patients died in the past 24 hours. Currently, there are 6,70,301 6, uh, active cases in the state of Maharashtra alone. Uh, shifting focus to Uttar Pradesh. Now, in view of the increasing cases of corona infections in UP, state government has increased the two-day curfew to three days as the corona curfew has helped in reducing the prevalence of the infection. An extended uh, weekend curfew from Friday 8 p.m. to Tuesday 7 a.m. will be in place. Only essential services will continue uninterrupted. Industrial activities and vaccinations will also continue. Availability of remdesivir across districts has been also ensured. It is available free of cost in the government hospitals. Covid hospitals are being set up in Lucknow and Varanasi in collaboration with the DRDO. <laughs> इस दवाई में सबसे बड़ी लड़ाई है जब आपका छठे और आठवें दिन के बीच में सेचुरेशन कम होती है उसी टाइम आपकी सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट दवाई स्टेरॉइड होते हैं तो वो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट दवाई है और ये फर्स्ट शुरू करनी चाहिए बाकी दवाइयां जो हैं आपकी जो बड़े-बड़े नाम रेमडेसिविर टोसिलावाय इनके पीछे भागने का कोई मतलब नहीं है ये कोई ज्यादा फायदा नहीं करेंगी वैक्सीन 100% लेनी है सबको लेनी है जो भी अलाउड है और इमीडिएटली जाके लीजिए क्योंकि एक महीने से और रश हो जाएगा and uh, talking about Goa, where four-day lockdown began uh, yesterday night, police personnel have been deployed for strict enforcement of the lockdown. All essential services, including grocery stores, will be open during this period. State borders uh, will be open. Restaurants, kitchens are allowed to open, uh, allowed to provide home delivery takeaways, not open. Industrial services within campuses are prom permitted. They will have to arrange their own transport. In partial modification to earlier decision, government has allowed state transport buses for essential services staff with maximum of 50% capacity.